deep learning is a sub field of artificial intelligence and machine learning that uses algorithms inspired by structure and function of brain's neural network here the picture below is a neuron a constituent of brain's neural network neurons are basic functional units of nervous system they generate electrical signals called action potentials which allow them to quickly transmit information over long distances the structure of a neuron consists of dendrites nucleus cell body and axon this is the area of concentration for us dendrites are the structures which connects one neuron to another neuron or the subsequent neuron the cell body stores the information which is acquired from the subsequent or the nearby neuron and the axon starts transmitting the messages from this neuron to the next neuron the axon terminals are the point which passes the information from our current neuron to the next neuron so this biological concept has been adopted in deep learning let's understand certain basic concepts of deep learning deep learning is a computer software that mimics the network of neurons in a brain as we understood in the previous slide it is a subset of machine learning and is called deep learning because it makes use of deep neural networks what is machine learning machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence which strives to understand the pattern in the input data and predict the future models and create a model so it is a subset of machine learning and is called deep learning because it makes use of deep neural networks the machine uses different layers to learn from the data see here is the input data <coughs> here is the output layer output one output two and this output is being framed or predicted by studying the patterns in the input layer in various hidden layers so this concept is called deep learning so the machine uses different layers to learn from the data the depth of the model the number of layers in the model is the depth of the model is represented by the number of layers in the model the deep learning is a new state of art in terms of AI in terms of AI in deep learning the learning phase is done through a neural network so the learning happens in various layers mimicking the concept of neurons a neural network is an architecture where layers are stacked upon each other as visible the neural networks that we use in deep learning aren't actual biological neural networks which is very obvious so these are not the actual biological neural networks but they simply share the characteristics with the biological neural networks so we call this as artificial neural networks artificial neural networks are built using what we call it as neurons so mimicking the brain the individual elements here we call this as neurons neurons in artificial neural networks as you see in the picture is organized into what we call it as layers so this is layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layers within a layer is called as hidden layers here in the picture depicted H2 is a hidden layer. 
if a artificial neural network has more than one hidden layer this concept is called as deep artificial neural network let's delve into learning deep of deep learning so before uh, getting into the deep learning concepts i wish we folks understand certain basic concepts or certain basic terms which comes repeatedly at many places in the, in the study of deep learning so here are certain terms tangent in geometry tangent is one term which you would come across at many places in a deep learning study tangent in geometry the tangent line or simply tangent to a plane curve at a given point is a straight line that, that just touches the curve at the point here we have a beautiful curve a mathematical beautiful curve and here the line which touches the curve is called tangent here we have a sphere a mathematical sphere a geometrical sphere if not we have a tangent plane a tangent touches the curve at one point this is a tangent line and this is a tangent plane gradient slope or a gradient of a line is a number that describes both the direction and the steepness of the line so we have a beautiful plane x and the y plane here we have a line so the slope of this line is a number that describes both the direction and the steepness of this line slope is offered described or denoted by the letter m observe this beautiful picture here we have a mountain just imagine it rains heavily on the mountain so when the when it rains the water starts flowing down isn't it and how does the water start flowing down water starts to flow down finding the most less resistant path isn't it if the water is able to come down in this way so easily water will naturally select will naturally select the most least resistance path the concept of water flowing down with the least resistant path has a connection with our subsequent slides wait for it as discussed in the previous videos and previous slides machine learning and deep learning is a process of training a machine to learn and do a prediction by itself now one of the most critical parts of any machine learning algorithm is optimization what is optimization optimization is the method to make your learning algorithm learn faster so you have a learning algorithm which will which will learn from the input data and it will predict a model right making that learning algorithm to learn faster is a process called optimization this optimization so summarizing optimization is a process of making your learning algorithm learn faster so gradient descent is one of the most powerful optimization algorithm used in machine learning which will help in making our mesh making our learning algorithm learn faster right this mathematical equation representing the gradient descent below is this repeat until convergence when i say convergence converges the point where you cannot still more optimize but this equation looks scary yes it looks scary but it's only perspective if you would understand the details or the basics behind it it becomes easier here we go this is a picture of a mountain which we saw in our previous slides and had certain discussion 
giving a small recap of the discussion when it rains obviously the water tends to come and reach a minimum in the most least resistant path right now comparing this to our learning optimization algorithms see just imagine this mountain doesn't have any interruptions just a convex just a convex mountain where there is zero resistance so water falls and reaches the bottommost of the point without any hurdles this is called as global minima whereas that is the ideal state and that cannot happen right mountain will have many resistances many stones many trees where the water tends to get arrested and has some difficulty in reaching the bottommost point of the mountain right it's possible and that's a practical case so that is called as local minima in ideal case when the mountain is in convex shape water tends to run and reach the bottom called as global minima if the water tends to get arrested at some places then it's called as local minima the objective of the gradient descent is to achieve global minima and to reduce the local minima there are two other important terms that we are supposed to understand and take into consideration during the gradient descent study one is the learning rate and initial position to compare and explain with the with this of the with that of the mountain here so depending upon the initial point where the water falls the water reaches the bottom point in a faster rate for example if the water falls here which the, which has no resistance it will reach faster and if the water falls here somewhere with more resistance it will become slower so the initial point is very important for optimizing the gradient descent and another element is the learning rate learning rate is the speed of the water depending upon the speed of the water water tends to either reach a global maxima or local minima hence learning rate and initial position are very important elements in designing a gradient descent algorithm as discussed in the previous slide the alpha the learning rate and the initial position theta can be set to have a faster optimization alpha is the learning rate which is equivalent to the speed of the water which comes down from the mountain and theta is the initial position the point where the water falls when the water falls in the least minimal resistant path it reaches a global minimum faster when the speed of the water is more also it reaches a minimum a global minimum faster hence the equivalence learning rate and theta initial position we can set on our own so that's where our skill lies such to calculate the gradient of a function or for point theta we have to differentiate the mathematical differentiation the function once with respect to theta so this is the formula for a gradient descent algorithm theta n plus 1 is the new position whereas theta n is the older position the optimized theta n plus 1 is optimized position so theta n minus alpha the learning rate and the differential the, dif the once differentiated result of the gradient function j here is one integrative and a simple example has how a gradient is being calculated so consider a function f of x y where f of x y is equal to x plus y we set the initial values as x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6 as we set the theta the learning rate and the initial position the output of the function is obviously 8 so what is the what is the objective 
our objective is to optimize so the question here is how to tweak the values of the inputs to decrease the output so the value the output is 8 how we are going to tweak the values of x and y so that the values of 8 decreases step by step gradually so here we say it, uh, we say it's decreasing but in the actual terms we call that as we'll, we call that as differentiating the above function with respect to x and y so to decrease the output of the function we need to decrease the output of the function x plus y is equal to 8 we need to decrease the values of x and y respectively so the by initial value that we have set for x, x, is, x is 2 by changing the value of x is equal to 2 to 1.99 from 2 to 1.999 we would get an output of 7.99 agree the similar way by reducing the value from y is equal to 6 to 5.999 we will get the output as 7.998 which is less than 8 so this function f of x y is equal to x plus y which is equal to 8 will take 400 iterations 400 sorry 4000 times of iterations or differentiation to get a value to get a most optimized value which is f of x y is equal to 0 so the prompt values where this function of f of x y becomes 0 the most least or the most optimized value is x is equals to minus 2 and y is equals to 2 so we have got the expected values of x and y that causes our function to give the minimum value 0 